Hi, I'm Dr. George Ho of Vancouver. This movie will show you how to cure lumbar disc hernia and acute low back pain. You see why the two problems are related in this movie. This is only an educational movie, and please consult your healthcare professional for your particular health problem. The author assumes no responsibility and liability of any outcome as a result of the application of the contents of the movie. Please do so at your own risk. There are several ways to diagnose lumbar disc hernia. If you are not sure, your doctor is not sure, uh, CT scan or MRI can objectively confirm the diagnosis of lumbar disc hernia. Most textbooks will tell you uh, this hernia will send radiation pain from the back to the leg. As indicated in the diagram, number one is the quarter equinine in the, of the, um, in the spinal canal. And then when the protruded disc compresses onto the quarter equinine, um, pain goes down the leg to the lumbar nerve. Most lumbar disc hernia occur at three levels, L4, L5, and S1. If you know which level is easier for you to specific, specifically treat that level of the muscle. By comparing the skin sensation on both sides of your leg, you can locate the level of the disc hernia and you can monitor the effectiveness of the treatment because when the treatment is effective, the skin sensation will increase. The skin sensation is less in the inside of the leg is L4. If the skin sensation is less on the outside of the leg is L5. If the skin sensation is less on the back of the leg is S1. L4 is around the navel area and then L5 is lower and S1 is even lower. Lumbar disc hernia is usually preceded by episodes of acute low back pain. Medically, acute low back pain is known as posterior facet joint incarceration. It is characteristic by a sudden, very severe sharp pain. And some patients uh, claim that they haven't done anything. They just bend down to pick up a piece of paper and then the sharp pain uh, make them fall down on the floor. If you look at this picture closely, you'll understand why the pain is so severe. Each facet joint is like a set of pliers wrapped up by a synovial membrane which is not visible here. When these small muscle, the intrinsic muscle deep inside the, uh, the back, is they're too tired, they cannot control the facet joint anymore, and the facet joint can pinch on the synovial membrane. It's like, um, you know, you accidentally bite the inside of your mouth, and then your teeth not let go. You see how painful it is. This may sound terrible, but it's not difficult to treat. If I have to treat it, I just have to adjust the joint, release the pinching, and the patient is okay in one or two, or two days. If you cannot find anybody to uh, adjust the joint for you, all you have to do is lie down in bed for a week or so, take anti-inflammatory, and then you probably will be okay. But the problem is that if you do not rehabilitate the small muscle called the multifacets, this acute low back pain can recur. If you do not treat acute low back pain properly, you probably will get lumbar disc hernia because each level of the back is supported like a tripod, the two facet joints in the back and the disc in the front. If even one facet joint is not working, that side is weakened and then um, the disc might protrude on that side. 
luckily the multifidus, uh, the small intrinsic muscle that look out the back, they are not difficult to rehabilitate. The McKenzie exercise is the most commonly prescribed exercise. And um, this exercise uh, was uh, discovered very accidentally by Rob McKenzie. Because uh, one day he, was, he sent a patient to um, a room to wait for him. And then uh, he told the patient to lie down. And then when he went back to see the patient, the patient was lying face down. That uh, the lumbar disc hernia patient, though, face down on the back that is uh, pulled out like a bow, and then he, the patient was lying down like the cobra style uh, way of lying down, and then he was really shocked to see that. And then when he asked the patient how he was, the patient told him that, "Oh, I, I'm a, a lot better." Now this incident tells you that one yoga pose can treat lumbar disc hernia and acute back pain. And yoga uh, in modern science is called integrated body-mind training. It is the form of old religion. Now, if you just want to treat your back, one problem, do you think you should go through a whole series of difficult poses? Please use your common sense. Other variations of uh, doing the McKenzie exercise is you can do it standing up instead of lying face down. Uh, you can use an exercise ball. Uh, you can back extend it into the ball, pushing it. And um, you can do it on the affected side first and to see how effective it is. And you can do it alternatively or both sides. And um, you can do it without a ball too, but it might not be as effective. Uh, you, you, if you are tired of doing it backward, you can do it front pushing, as indicated in the diagram. If you want to add heat uh, to treat the inflammation, you can do the exercise in a sauna, in a hot tub, or even in a hot bathtub. And uh, some yoga classes teach uh, a simple form of yoga breathing called AD20. Uh, the uh, instruction is to take a full breath and enter the pose and limit your tidal breathing, that is the in and out breathing, within 20% of the full breath. And then uh, constrict the throat and breathe through the nose, making a snoring sound <laughs> like that. And uh, this is the rather crude way of breathing. In my book, the Tai Chi Cranial Sacral Postural Reflex, that for the back and health enhancement, I have a scientific explanation why restrictive breathing is good for rehabilitation. I have a YouTube movie on this too. A more advanced method is in the next frame. Other um, restrictive yoga breathing are called Victoria breathing by closing one side of the nose or flexing your neck. Um, I have talked about a throw down 10 form of breathing in my other movie on YouTube. And um, the throw down 10 is trained by singing in a pharyngeal tone because you have to narrow, constrict your throat in order to sing in that pharyngeal tone. So when you do that, you can constrict your throat and breathe in less air. This is a form of restrictive breathing too. Singing in a pharyngeal tone is more pleasant than snoring, like, right? And the training of singing strengthens the throat muscle, and since the throat muscles are controlled by the vagus nerve, this type of singing can strengthen the autonomic nervous system because when the vagus nerve is strong, uh, the autonomic nervous system is stronger. So please watch my other YouTube movie like Good Posture and Breathing with Dr. George Ho's Integrated Mind-Body Training. Uh, I have the uh, link in the illustration down below. Uh, your treatment effectiveness can be monitored by the pain radiation pattern. If the radiation shooting down the leg become shorter and shorter, then your treatment is effective. And if you can find a good doctor to 
correct the posterior facet joint problem and the disc problem for your lumbar disc hernia and acute low back pain can be cured. Hi, I'm Dr. George Ho. This concludes the movie. And if you like this movie, please click like and please share it with your friend in other media like the Facebook. And it would really motivate me to make more movie like this if you would subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Dr. George Ho of Vancouver. Thanks again. Goodbye. Subscription is totally free.